This is the OAuth flow. It's something that I've always wanted to implement in my game, but I've never really had the knowledge that I needed to uh, to make it work properly. It's something that was always out of reach because I only did Unity for uh, the beginning of my career. But now the point I'm at, my, my daytime job actually has to do with anything, especially web related. So um, throughout the years, recent years, I've been able to gather the skill to actually create it. And I wanted to make a OAuth authentication with Discord. This is a topic we're going to be covering today. So that's pretty much what I've been up to last week. And I'm going to take you through the journey on how I implemented this. But first, let's actually have a look at how it looks like. I first start by booting my server on Node.js. I then connect to my WebSocket and then I can choose Discord authentication. This pops up the window. I can authorize and if I just put them side to side, as you can see, I'm now authenticated with my user ID. That's also my Discord image right now. So it's nothing fancy looking, but it's quite functional. And the plan with this is to allow people on, on our Discord, by the way, if you're not on Discord, just join the description down below, but it's gonna allow them to actually join the game first, have early access to the game I'm gonna be making. And also um, I'm gonna request them a scope to see their friends. And if they want to give that scope, then I'm gonna allow them to join each other. Now, with that being said, let me take you through the journey on how I implemented the Discord authentication. So to achieve this result, I had to fire two different flows upon clicking on the Discord button in my game. So when you decide you want to log in with Discord, you click on it. And first, I have to fire a browser. So uh, we can start with the authentication flow. And then second, I have to listen for a response in any way, shape or form. So initially, I opted for a HTTP listener, which would turn my client here into a server itself. So everybody who would have my game on their machine would then open up a port and have the credential sent to them. So I've got that to work in one afternoon. Uh, and then I started realizing the implication it had. It would mean that the client side would have to forward some ports and that the server would need to redirect to the user's IP. So that solution would compromise the Discord access token because you, well, first my application would have to trust many different redirection URLs, something dynamic because everybody's gonna have a different IP address. Uh, and that makes myself vulnerable for attack on my application, on my Discord application. But it would also make it so every single player playing the game as they connect to Discord, they're now vulnerable to a man-in-the-middle attack where anybody could grab their Discord access token. And though the Discord access token, the one I'm requesting with the scope is not really a, a harsh one. So if you get hacked, if somebody steals your Discord access token in this specific case, um, they would be able to know who you are on Discord, not your email address, just, just your username and discriminator. And they would also be able to know which guilds uh, you are part of, so which server you're part of. Those are the only two things that would be leaked. And of course, your access to the, the game. So if you're using that to access the game, they would also have that. So it's definitely not a desired outcome. Plus, having to forward port manually make it feel like it's a game from the 80s. Uh, of course, if I want to be able to stand out, uh, you know, I'm by myself on this game. So if I want to be able to stand out, I have to do things at least as good as everybody else. And that's why, uh, yeah, that's not, that's not an option. Now, my second attempt at doing this is a much smarter one, but it's also one that is a lot more hard to implement, a lot more hard to architect, and there's now moving pieces around. Let me explain. So here, instead of making myself the server and waiting for credential to arrive to me, I would instead create a backend, a Node.js backend, that would also have two points of entry. One of them would be the REST API to deal with everything OAuth related. So the redirect URL, the client credentials, the client secret would all be stored on my server. So somewhere saved. And um, that's my first point of entry. So I would have routes that you can access through get post and you know, a basic REST API for OAuth. And then I would also have another thread running on my server for sockets. My Unity client would then subscribe to the WebSocket and get his information from there. By doing this, it also means that I would be able to filter the information, meaning that if I don't need to send the access token, I am not going to do it. I can just send the username, I can just send the game account information, his character name, things like that. I can do that without compromising information. I can just send the good information, the filtered information to the player without sending him his whole thing. Now, with this approach in mind, the project architecture would look something like this. 
So I went ahead and I booted up a Express server, configured my Discord OAuth project, I've then added the authentication route, got my first token back, and with that token, I've requested the user information. At that point in time, it would mean that I would have access to his user data on Discord. So that's his public user data. ID, username, discriminator, and the avatar Ash. So that's cool. At that point, I have access to the user information, but they're still on my server. They're still on the back end. They are not in the user's end. They are not in the Unity client. So I have to figure out a way to take this information from my back end to the Unity front end. So that's where we introduce the socket. At the same time, I actually booted up my authentication module, which takes care of everything OAuth related. I also boot up my WebSocket. Now creating a WebSocket in Node.js is really, really easy. All you have to do is create that package, initiate the WebSocket object, and then have callback every time somebody connects. Now where it gets complicated is making this run in parallel with the Unity client, because then, you know, we have the WebSocket here on Node.js, but we also have to have a WebSocket run in C Sharp in the Unity client. So in C Sharp, I first start by creating the new object and then I boot up two threads, one for receiving messages and one for sending message. And if you don't know already, doing multi-threaded stuff with Unity is a pain. Why is it a pain? Because Unity is only running in one thread and we try to, to stay away from other threads. So everything is single-threaded Unity, unless you're using the job system. In that case, it would be multi-threaded, but uh, we're not using the job system. In these new threads, I run two functions, run receive and run send respectively. If I am to look at run send, both of them are actually a while through loop. So while through, while true, which means they just keep on being ran every single frame. And as long as it's not completed, so as long as I haven't sent all the message I need to send inside of my send queue, then it's going to keep on sending those messages. And then when it's done, it just keeps on repeating on a different thread. For receiving, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So um, I keep on looking if there's a new message in the receive and do note that this is a async function. So it's just gonna wait here until the message is there. And then once we have a message, I dispatch it in the main thread over here. Now the way I receive these message is very, very similar to something we've done for the lower level API and also the unit transport layer uh, and the one I'm currently using right now. So it's always kind of the same system. So what really happens here, and I'm going to try to get over all of that real quick, is I'm using the concept of having a operation code, which means every time I send something over uh, on the boat side, I just pad it at the beginning, I pad a certain byte, and that byte is going to define what type of message it is. So in this case here, I have a non-message, I have a connection message, authentication message, a heartbeat, and also a error message. Those are all different bytes that I put in front of my packet before I send it. So if we have a look over here, at this point, we have received a message, we're reading the first byte, and then we know what type of message it is. Is it a heartbeat? Is it a connection request? Or is it a authentication message? And this way of doing thing has been proven to work well. You know, we've done it with the transport layer, we've made the whole chess game on it, we've made different games in the, in the past. Um, but sometimes, in this very specific case, it doesn't work because of the treading. Let me show you this clip. This is a heartbeat slash keep alive packet that I receive, and I just send it back to the server immediately. Notice that I have two debug.log in there, one at the beginning and then one at the end. Here, I receive a heartbeat, but it's not sending it back. No error in the console, nothing to tell me that the flow of the code has been pushed somewhere else or has been interrupted. As I've mentioned, Unity is all running on the main thread. And this code right there is actually on the receive thread because I'm receiving a message, I'm doing that on the receive thread. And then because of one specific statement that involves Unity, everything is sent off the charts. It's this statement right here. That's right, because time.time .time is from the Unity DLL, the code flow is interrupted and lost. Which was really a pain to figure out because I was in the dirty coding mode where you just like, you code a lot of things really fast just to get get things off the ground really and and it's just like i made multiple modifications i don't know which one caused this crash for some reason now all my other message doesn't work and i'm not getting any information in the console like it's not going to tell you that things stop running uh and then it would mean that my sending array my sending queue would get filled with message and they would not be able to dispatch so another thing that i didn't know really uh because i had no logs 
But once I understood this, I started wrapping up everything Unity related in a dispatcher that would take care of running this on the main thread. Let's try this one more time, see if you can spot the issue. In this example, my code flow is interrupted when I receive a connection package. So what happens when I receive a connection package, I go through here, I create a connection packet and I don't get the invoke, which would mean that my problem is inside of the constructor here. So let's have a look. Once we enter the connection packet, we then enter the constructor that has a reference, has a argument right here. What we do is we just set a operation code. Operation code is a enum, a simple enum, and then we deserialize. So we go down here and these are the two line of code that it gets stuck at. Why? Well, the reason why is because this here is a fixed string 32. What is a fixed string 32? I did not know before that exactly. I know I reused that um, in the past for the relay transport layer, but it turns out it's actually a structure from string. So right here at the top, this is the outlier. So my tips to you is if you have a problem with threading with Unity, just have a look at the top of your class, see if anything at the top uses Unity, and if that's the case, try to reduce it, try to remove it completely, and that might fix the problem. At this point in time, I had both the information from Discord API, and I also had my WebSocket running. So now it's time to put them together. To do so, as mentioned, I am using this structure right here, which is when I receive a message in my WebSocket on Unity, and I'm also sending information um, through Node.js uh, the same exact way, right? So this has been reproduced the same exact way. So uh, same error code, connection, authentication, and then heartbeat. So right here is my receive code on the WebSocket on the Node.js side. Um, the only thing I take care of is the connection. When I receive a connection packet, I just send it back with the server time on it. I was just trying to test out uh, both, both ways, so <laughs> communication in both ways. Um, other than that, I send packet all the time through the send packet. I serialize my packet first, as you can see over here, I have four different kinds, the authentication packet, and I just do it the exact same way as we did it in Unity, right? So I create myself a buffer, a byte array buffer. I put information in the buffer. First is the operation code. Then here is depending on, um, on the structure of my object. So here, my second byte is actually the provider and Discord is the first one. I then write the Discord ID over here, the username discriminator, and of course the avatar hash. Now, what is really important is that I do the exact same thing on the Unity side. So let's have a look. This is a Discord authentication packet. And I first have the operation code. I have the provider. I actually don't have a look at them because I know what they are already. Um, and then I start from offset 2 because that's 0, 1, and then 2. I read from 2 to 18, which is a 16-byte uh, bit array. Sorry, it's a 16-byte array. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's my unique ID, and then I keep on doing that for username, discriminator, and avatar ash. With that, I have deserialized successfully my object, and I send that back to my game. I send it back to my game and my game takes care of fetching the rest of the information if needed. So in the Discord case, as I sign in, uh, my game actually fetches the icon over here as well. And that's pretty much it for the journey I had to take to make the Discord authentication work. Uh, still, a lot of things have to be done. I have to turn my WebSocket into a web secure socket. I have to turn my Node.js server into a HTTPS server. You know, encrypt things both ways is very important. And from that point on, just clean things up. Yeah. <laughs> if you enjoyed something, if you learned something out of this, or if you want to learn more or implement this on your own game, you can always ask questions directly in the comment section down below. But um, it's going to be much easier if you ask questions in Discord. Why? Because you can share a code snippet, you can share a screenshot, things like that. And we have an active Discord. So if you'd like to see that, the link is in the description down below. It should be the first link, second link, something like that. And you can ask question here in the web section or the Unity programming section. Both are going to be fine for this type of question. And that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.